Uh, mm -hmm. Superintendent uh, Hui, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but uh, welcome. Uh, it's great to finally meet you, sir. Hello, 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 hi. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Hee, for your invitations uh, so that uh, we can join your ceremony. Glad that uh, we're able to finally meet in you know, uh, more or less in person after our <laughs> many emails. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, thank you so right. much for making the time uh, in your busy morning. So I uh, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to uh, Chief Superintendent, Mr. Hui uh, of the Youth Command uh, in the New Territories, if I recall the title correctly, sir. I wanted to introduce you to Superintendent Chow, just so that uh, you have both a chance to virtually meet uh, since you are both responsible for uh, youth. Good evening, Mr. Hui. It's nice meeting you. This is Mr. Chow. We have uh, another Mr. Chow from uh, Louis Chow. Oh, yes, Kong. yes. <laughs> I'm Raymond Chow, but not the uh, producer of the Bruce Lee movies. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Lowe. Evening. Looking good in your uh, number good evening. one. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's a, I haven't seen that for 20 years. <laughs> well, we have a lot of people waiting in the uh, waiting room. Wow, this is uh, a great turnout. I see uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Steve Kern is here. Sir, welcome. I see uh, Mr. Yim has arrived as well, sir. Good to see you. It's a very good looking group here. How's everybody feeling? Ready to rock and roll? Okay, let's start this show. So here we go. Let's. Uh, Admit all. Good evening. How are you, Richard? Hello. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much. Everyone's here. Hello, Mr. Rohani. Hi, Farhang. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, we have. Uh, Mr. Chow, Superintendent Chow here as well. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Rohani. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. It's here. Yeah. Good yeah. evening, folks. Bienvenue. Welcome, everybody. Um, hello, hello. I'm seeing so many people on this. Uh, this is very challenging. <laughs> I haven't seen this many people in a long time. Uh, just give us a moment here as we uh, let people in.
Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. De Leon, again. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, bonsoir à tous. I'm Richard N. Liu, Honorary Brigade Division President, and welcome back to a pre-event reception. Uh, we are very grateful to see folks tuning in from across Canada and Hong Kong. So allow me to first introduce our host Burnaby team around the table. Let's begin with uh, Mr. Chow and Mr. Ahadzadeh. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Raymond Chow, and I'm the Divisional Superintendent of, of Division 389 Cadet Division in Burnaby. Thank you for uh, uh, attending this evening. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Farhan Yahadzadeh, and I'm the Divisional Superintendent for Division 304 based here in Burnaby. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight on this very special event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, who do we else we have? Mr. Lowe. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming again to uh, join us from around the world. Uh, hope you enjoy tonight. Ms. Huang and Ms. Ho are dynamic duo. Good evening. Um, thank you for everyone joining tonight. My name is Eva. I'm the admin officer from Division 389C. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm the training officer of Division 3 and I. Um, welcome to join us tonight. I hope you can um, enjoy the night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Vincent Liu, the other Liu. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'm a community service coordinator, and then uh, nice to meet everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Mr. De Leon. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian DeLeon. I'm an officer of uh, special training and events. It's good to be here tonight. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing the night with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, some of our NCOs are on, on here. Let's see who I can see. Uh, Sergeant Butler. Good evening, everyone. I am Sarah Butler, a sergeant from Division 389. Um, I believe I saw Sergeant Yip earlier. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sergeant Yip. Um, it's an honor to be here tonight. I welcome everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Yip. Um, Corporal Yu. Uh, so hello, everyone. I'm Corporal Yu of Division 389. It's great to see everyone here tonight. Thank you, Corporal. Corporal Huang. Um, hello, I'm Corporal Huang from 389 and I'm really excited for um, this event tonight. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, ah, Council General Bedlington. Ni hao. <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Rachel Bedlington. I'm the uh, Council General of Canada here in Hong Kong and Macau. I'm just newly arrived. And such a great pleasure to join you this evening, uh, see so many friends at home in Canada, and to see my dear friend Richard Leo after after uh, such a long time. Great to see you, Richard. Great to see you too as well. How do you again? Um, okay, let's see who else do we have here from St. John from, uh, yes, uh, our Deputy Provincial Commissioner, Steve Kern. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today, uh, and it's great to see uh, the big turnout, uh, both international and local. It's great to have you here, sir. Uh, Mr. Yim, sir. Hi, my name is Frederick Yim. I'm the Lower Mainland Area Commissioner. It's my honor to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Always good to have you here. Um, I see our chaplain, Mr. Yip, is here. Hello everyone, uh, Neham Ip is my name. I am the provincial chaplain for BC and Yukon. And uh, I am very honored to be here today. And uh, I uh, was born and raised in Hong Kong. So uh, this uh, meant a lot for me. So I'm very glad to be here and I hope we enjoy each other's company today. Great to have you here, Mr. Yip. Thank you very much. Uh, I see PHQ, our friend Rahul is here. Good evening, everyone, and uh, good morning to some of you back in Hong Kong and Macau. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. It's an honor to be here as well. Um, 
surprisingly, yes, I am also from Hong Kong. Most of my life, I've lived there before I moved over to Vancouver. Um, and I work for the provincial headquarters in parallel to the volunteers. Well, I'd say the honorable volunteers. They mean everything to the organization themselves. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Rahul. It's always great to have you here. Uh, I see Elder Joy Dockray is here. Yes. Hello. Um, Tawel Pekia, Kaskitaway of CCP Su small black Thunderbird woman, Cree Nation, Saskatchewan, and welcoming all of you and wanting to acknowledge and give that acknowledgement to the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples in British Columbia from where I'm situated right now. My area includes the KC, Kwantlen, K-Kite, Suwasan, and Semiamu bands, but all of the lower mainland peoples, first peoples of Canada, is who I am so honored to represent and acknowledge today. I also come to you as one of the lead people for the St. John Ambulance Therapy Dog Program, and I've been volunteering for them for about 20 years. I represent also the Indigenous veterans in the lower mainland of British Columbia. So all my relations, hi, hi, thank you. Thank you, Joy. Okay, uh, we have guests from Hong Kong. We're very honored to have them uh, from St. John Ambulance, uh, Hong Kong, join us. I see uh, uh, Chief Superintendent uh, Hui is here with us. Yes, hey, uh, good evening, everybody. So uh, it's uh, so nice to meet you all here. So, uh, I, can, I can begin uh, so many new friends here. Um, this is my honor to join your, uh, this ceremony is really uh, memorable to me. And uh, I think uh, this is a very good chance for us to build a, a, a new uh, network with all of you from Canada. Actually, we have a lot of friends, uh, St. John's friends uh, in, uh, in Canada, and, uh, and it's a very good chance for, for us to meet again. Uh, I'm working in the St. John's as a chief, uh, chief superintendent from uh, Youth Command. And uh, also I have two colleagues that to join us uh, today. Uh, so uh, later on, they do introduce themselves. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, and Rabbi Saidam is gonna be our, uh, our special presenter uh, in, uh, at the very end of our event, uh, Cadet Leader Law, if you wanna do a quick short introduction to yourself. Sure, hello everyone. I'm uh, uh, Mr. Law, uh, Cadet Leader Mr. Law, and you can call me James. And this is my pleasure to be here to have a light and short presentation in the quite end in this whole ceremony. So thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Mr. Law. It's great to have you here with us. Um, Mr. Hui, you said someone else from Hong Kong is here. I'm going to try and see if I can scroll through the Wow, there's a lot of things. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chow, Superintendent uh, Chow is here with us as well. If you want to do a quick uh, introduction, sir. Hello. Hello there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud uh, and clear. Hi. Hi. Yeah, um, I was honored to join the meeting and it's been it bringing back a lot of memories because my first join St. John was uh, with Division 640 at North Shore back in 85. That's oh, how I wow. end up with St. John. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, welcome uh, back to Canada uh, virtually. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you here. It was fantastic to see that connection there. I'm sure many of you may uh, have worked alongside Mr. Chow then. Um, that's wonderful. Great to have you here. Okay, so from our, we've, we've had a chance to meet uh, some of our uh, St. John friends here, but we also have friends from other parts of the world and in different uh, backgrounds. And I do see um, uh, Janet from uh, Burnaby North. Do you want to do a quick intro, Janet? Uh, sure, I will. Um, my name is uh, Janet Rutledge. I'm uh, the member of the uh, British Columbia Le Legislative Assembly uh, for Burnaby North. And I uh, would like to acknowledge that I am joining you uh, from the uh, 
unceded traditional territories of the Huckamaman and Squamish speaking people. And in the spirit of uh, truth and reconciliation, um, I want to acknowledge the truth that uh, I am a newcomer to this land. And, um, and I uh, daily want to uh, respect and reconcile uh, the relationship uh, with the people who were here before us. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Uh, right next to her, I see uh, the Honorable George Chow is here. Uh, I know Raymond calls you uncle, Uncle Chow. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, you are unmuted, sir. That never fails. Hi, everyone. I'm George Chow. I'm uh, also the member of the Legislative Assembly of BC. And I represent the riding of Vancouver Fraserview, which is right next to Burnaby. And I'm speaking to you from Vancouver on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Slavitude nations with whom we share this land and their hospitality. And I'm very happy to be here to be uh, listening to the keynote speaker and then celebrating this um, important memorable event in Hong Kong. Thank you, uh, George. It's great to have you here. Um, I see Catherine Yuen is here. Yeah, thank you, Richard. And, and hello, everybody. And uh, yeah, I see the Council General uh, Bedding, uh, Beddington. Uh, it's the first time I, I, I see you here. Uh, I'm Catherine Yuen with the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office, uh, which is the representative office of Hong Kong SAR government in Canada. Uh, my head office is in Toronto. Uh, my director, uh, Emily Mo, uh, ha is highly engaged and she's not able to join us today here. So uh, I'm representing uh, the office. And uh, well, thank you, Richard, for uh, inviting me to join this uh, meaningful commemoration of the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Hong Kong. And thanks to the uh, Canadian uh, soldier who has fought so uh, bravely uh, to protect Hong Kong in those days. And this is something that uh, we will never forget. Um, so I just uh, enjoy the evening and uh, um, wish everybody uh, merry uh, seasons. Uh, happy, happy uh, new year. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to have you here. Um, you know, a lot of this could not happen without support. And uh, I see uh, the representative of the Veterans Affairs Canada is here with us, uh, Donna uh, Twemlow. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, if you want to just say a quick hello. Hi, Richard. Hi, everyone. And I am coming to you tonight from the lovely village of Steveston, BC, on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples, and I wish to honor that. Um, this is a great honor for me to be here and present tonight, and I really do appreciate that. If you're able to see my background picture at the moment, that is uh, a reflection of C Company, the Royal Rifles, um, destined for Hong Kong. So I thought that an appropriate picture to put up for today's ceremony. So thank you so much, Richard. It's my honor and pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Donna. It's great to have you here. Um, and speaking of military, uh, we have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Fari Rahani here. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I bring you greetings <clears throat> from the commanding officer of the British Columbia Regiment, uh, Vincent, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vincent Verk. And it's a great pleasure to be here and see so many dedicated uh, volunteers and friends of uh, St. John's. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Richard, as always. It's always great to have you here, sir. And right next to him is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ted Hawthorne. Sir, welcome. Uh, thank you. Good evening, folks. My name is Ted Hawthorne, and I'm the Vice President of the British Columbia Regiment Duke of Connaught's own association which represents our veterans and supporters of our regimental family. It's certainly an honor to be here this evening and a privilege to participate in the remembrance of the service and sacrifice of our soldiers 
during the Battle of Hong Kong. So I look forward to this evening's uh, evening of remembrance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hawthorne, sir. And right beside him is he is, uh, I can, I hope I don't butcher your name, sir. Uh, Mr. Gino Simeone of the Last Post Fund Memorial. Can you hear me? Perfecto. Yeah, the, thank you for having me. Um, my association with St. John, I was the former provincial deputy commissioner and my present association with the, the organization is through the last post fund and we are delighted to be part of this ceremony. I am the BC branch, branch president. Thank you. Thank you, Gino. It's good to have you here. Uh, and we have uh, a couple of representatives from the Hong Kong Veterans Commemorative Association. I see Mr. Jerry Tuppert is here. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, what a tremendous turnout. Really quite a pleasure to um, speak to you here from uh, Duncan, uh, which is in the Couchin Valley, the unceded territory of the Kowitsin peoples. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased to uh, see so many people from all over uh, the Council General of Hong Kong. Uh, uh, thank you and um, look forward to seeing. Um, and I also watched the other night uh, the uh, the beautiful remembrance ceremony that they had there. Very touching, very moving ceremony. Uh, it's very easy as uh, the current uh, BC representative here uh, of the Hong Kong Veterans Commemoration to, uh, to um, do this work because um, of course uh, my father was there and, uh, and it, it's just something that we never forget. And it's such a pleasure to uh, see all these people from uh, Hong Kong and uh, who are so sincerely dedicated to the remembrance of, uh, of people like soldiers like my father. Um, it's just really touching, very moving. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Tupper. It's great to have you here. Um, I see Mr. Edmund Wu is here, also from the HKVCA. Uh, Edmund, you are on mute. Okay. Can you hear me oh, now? There you are. Oh, yes. good. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm a Canadian uh, immigrated from Hong Kong some years ago. And um, um, I must say that when I was a young man at the age of about 11, 12, I stayed one week at the St. Stephen's College at the upper floor of the two-story building, where later I found out was used as a field hospital, military hospital where the massacre took place, very sadly. So... Yeah, and um, I'm a member of the uh, Hong Kong Veterans Commemorative Association and a parent of a veteran of Canada. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Edmund. It's great to have you here. Thank um, you. Now, I, I want to, and, and with that, it's a great segue to our veteran families that we have here. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Potin Chak's family. Uh, I see Colleen uh, is here. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Colleen. Uh, my father, Dr. Potin Chak, was part of the, the St. John Ambulance for Hong Kong. He was part of the, the Hong Kong, Battle of Hong Kong. And I'm here representing the family, and it's an honor to be invited to join this special event, the celebration of the 80th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. It's always great to have you here. Um, I see uh, another generation. Uh, Stephanie, uh, if you want, wouldn't mind unmuting yourself, please. Hi, I'm Stephanie Carver. I'm uh, Dr. Potin Chak's granddaughter, and this is Brooke, his great granddaughter. And my son's over there somewhere. <laughs> it's great to have you guys here. Um, I'm not sure if. Uh, Peggy Lee's family is here. I, I got a lot of people on here, so I'm just trying to scroll, scroll through this really quickly. Uh, if she is. Um, Richard, yeah, Richard, it's um, Deborah Reese Lee. Um, oh, it okay. Just says, yeah, it just says DRL. I don't know how that happened, but anyways, um, I don't know if, if my my um, image is, is on our video, but um, anyways, thank you so much um, uh, representing 
Peggy Lee, who's now 98 years old. And, um, and thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I just, uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, I don't think oh, my video, you. I'm having problems technically. <laughs> uh, no worries, Deborah. It's great to have you here. I'm glad you could make it. Um, and uh, I see Dr. John Reed's family is here. Hello, Richard. Uh, I'd like to say hello um, from Toronto. I'm one son of Dr. John Reed, who was in Hong Kong, one of the four medical officers with the Canadian regiments. Um, I know I'm joined here by my brother Tavish, who's in Vancouver. Um, and I'd like to especially say that um, we're so honored to be part of this this evening. But I want to thank you and Edmund um, for the respect and the wreath you placed at our father's uh, grave in um, Forest Lawn Cemetery very recently. That was um, a huge honor and we're very touched. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Uh, it, was our, it was our privilege to be able to do that. And um, you, you said your brother Tavish, okay, I see him. Is, is he able to go on, uh, say a couple of words there? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Audrey. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit challenged. And it, my children uh, finally got me on here. And I, I'm, I'm so happy this has happened. And I'm, I'm so happy you, um, you found uh, Dad's grave. And it's, uh, we go out there often. And we walk around the whole yard because it's uh, there's a lot of people out there that spent the time in the war. That means a lot to us that you're putting this on, and I appreciate it very much. And so does all my whole family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, from Vancouver. It's good to have you here. Um, I just hope I don't miss anybody here. I do see uh, Mr. Ho Herman Ho is here with us as well. So I want to see if you can give a say a few words there. Good evening, everyone, and good morning to those that are joining us from Hong Kong. Uh, I am Herman Ho, the past provincial chair of uh, BC and Yukon St. John Ambulance Society, and also the uh, past provincial commissioner of the St. John Ambulance Brigade in British Columbia. I was also born in Hong Kong many, many, many years ago, and I immigrated to Canada when I was uh, about seven years old. But my heart has always been in Hong Kong, and if it wasn't for the pandemic, I would have been in Hong Kong at this point, uh, uh, making the uh, commemoration in person uh, this past Sunday. But uh, thank you to Division 389 for hosting this very important event. And thank you for inviting me this evening. Thank you, Mr. Ho. It's uh, great to have you here. And it is great to see so many faces from across Canada and in Hong Kong. Um, well, as our longstanding tradition, uh, before we start things off, uh, we would like to use this opportunity to take a virtual group photo. So if you want to take, uh, turn your cameras on, please. Um, and uh, keep smiling for us. I'm going to try to do this. Uh, so hopefully it works. Um, just give me a second here to set myself up. As you straighten your berets and your glasses and everything and uh, your ties. Oh, yeah. Make sure my tie is on. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take a couple of screenshots and you don't know which one you're on. So just uh, keep still and smile at your camera. Okay, three, two, one. All right, thank you. So let's begin the official program. Uh, Mr. Hasade, over to you. Hello everyone. I'm Farhang Ahadzade, Divisional Superintendent for the Adult Division 304, based here in Burnaby, BC. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on this very special event. Before we begin, I invite the members to keep their headdress on, except during the opening and closing prayer, and remain seated. Please keep, keep your mics muted especially when our special guest is speaking. And if you have any questions, 
please raise your digital hands. Thank you. I would like to now invite our honorary Brigade Division President, Mr. Richard N. Liu, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Hazadeh. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us from the comfort of your living room or office. Those watching on YouTube, we need to reach 100 subscribers. So please click that subscribe button down here now and hit that bell up here to be notified when we post new videos. If you're new to this channel, you can always navigate our, our uploaded videos easily with the timestamp chapters in the video description below. If you haven't seen our previous videos, you can find them all on our growing YouTube channel. Thank you. Now, before we begin, we are grateful for the opportunity to present this special celebration on this shared territory tonight, as our division is proudly based in this diversity of Burnaby, which is located on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Coast Salish. As we have guests across Canada and Hong Kong, I would like to now invite Elder Joy Dockray, our First Nations veteran uh, representative to make the land acknowledgement. Yes, thank you. It is with great honor that I come to you representing not only the indigenous veterans, but as a community member of the Coast Salish territory, whose traditional unceded territory we are gathered today. The particular territories that I come to you from are represented by Kwantlen, Keitsi, Kaykite, Swasin and Semiamu bands, also um, Musqueam and Stowell. So thank you for allowing me to do that. And um, I am just very honored to be here and to be able to do this, all my relations. Thank you, Mr. Dockery for the land acknowledgement. Good evening, everyone. My name is Raymond Chow, and I'm the Divisional Superintendent of St. John Ambulance Cadet Division 389C. We are based in Burnaby, located right next door to Vancouver. We will begin this evening with an opening prayer by our St. John Ambulance BC Yukon Provincial Chaplain, Mr. Nahum Ip, followed by messages from across Canada and Hong Kong. When Chaplain Ip begins his prayer, Males, please remove your headdress and everyone bow your heads. You may replace your headdress after the prayer. Chaplain Nip, please. Good evening. I have a small acknowledgement and then a word of prayer from the St. John prayer book. So please bow your head, heads. <clears throat> 18, uh, 80 years ago today, 14,000 strong defensive force from England, from India, Volunteer, uh, volunteers from Hong Kong, Canadians and a nursing detachment were defending Hong Kong in one of the first battle in World War II. And I want you to remember their sacrifices, their bravery and their dedication to us and uh, to ensure freedom. Pray with me, please. God, our creator, when you speak, there is light and life. When you act, there is justice and love. Grant that your love may be presented at our meeting today, so that what we say and what we do may be for the good of St. John and your people. May we receive fresh encouragement in our work, catch a wider vision, and dedicate ourselves anew to the work to which you have called us. We ask this in the name of him who came to this world not to be served, but to serve. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Yip. We now have special messages from our very own St. John Ambulance CEO, Ty Spear, and the Honorable Lawrence McAuley, Minister of Veterans Affairs Canada, who will make opening remarks, followed by welcome remarks by Emily Mo, the Director of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in Toronto, and Rachel Bedlington, the Council General of Canada in Hong Kong and Macau. Good evening, members and friends across BC and Canada, and good morning, Hong Kong. Greetings on behalf of St. John Ambulance, BC and Yukon. As we mark the occasion of the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Hong Kong, we are reminded of the sacrifices that our St. John Ambulance members and veterans made to help save lives around the world. 
we are also reminded of those that never made it home to their loved ones. St. John Ambulance lost 56 officers, NCOs, and members in Hong Kong during the Second World War, many during the Battle of Hong Kong. We will never forget their bravery. Tonight, I want to thank the dynamic leadership of our Burnaby Division for hosting this commemoration and for taking the lead in our province's virtual engagements over the past year. You've done an amazing job. I look forward to meeting all of our volunteers in person when the opportunity arises. Until then, let me say thank you for all that you do. Please stay safe during this holiday season. One St. John. 80 years ago, Canadian soldiers saw their first major action of the Second World War while defending Hong Kong against Japanese attack. Even with limited training, the Royal Rifles of Canada and the Winnipeg Grenadiers showed the courage of seasoned professionals. Even still, just shy of 300 Canadians were killed in the fighting. Nearly 500 were wounded. Many survivors would suffer for years as prisoners of war, and more than 260 of them would die in the camps. We are forever grateful for the sacrifice Canadians made in helping bring peace and freedom to the people of Asia and the Pacific. And I want to thank all of you at St. John Ambulance for marking the 80th anniversary of the defense of Hong Kong. We can never let time take away the memory of those who served and died in the Second World War, lest we forget. President Liu, Consul General Bennington, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Hong Kong and Canada, including British Columbia, have established strong ties over the years. This includes the Battle of Hong Kong, where the Canadians helped defend the city 80 years ago. The stories of these brave Canadians, as well as the late Dr. Paul Tin Chuck of St. John Ambulance, who had endured the battle, will always be remembered. Both the St. John Ambulance Burnaby Division and Hong Kong St. John Ambulance are committed to building a healthier community. I wish both brigades all the best and look forward to seeing stronger ties between Hong Kong and Canada. Thank you. Liu Huizhang, Bachong Ling Si, 各位嘉宾，大家好。香港同加拿大，包括卑斯省在内，多年嚟喺国方面建立咗紧密嘅关系。當中包括八十年前第二次世界大戰嘅香港保衛戰，加拿大出兵協助守護香港。我哋永遠唔會忘記呢啲勇敢嘅加拿大人，以及當年參與保衛戰、剛剛辭世嘅翟寶田醫生嘅英勇事蹟。聖約翰救傷隊、本拿比同埋香港支部同樣致力創造建立健康社會。我祝願你哋嘅工作一切順利。亦期望見到香港同埋加拿大維持更緊密嘅關係。多謝各位。Council General Bedlington, over to you. Thank you very much, Richard. Well, hello everybody. Bonsoir, Dagai Ho. Uh, although we can't meet in person today, I'm so pleased that uh, St. John's Ambulance has gathered us together as a community. Uh, today, this evening, across Canada and in Hong Kong, it's uh, important to mark this very uh, important anniversary for, uh, for our communities. And I'm so pleased to see the family members of veterans also present for this, for this service. So wonderful to meet you, if, if only virtually. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is the 8th of December in Hong Kong, which marks the 80th anniversary of the start of the Battle of Hong Kong. This battle is not only a part of Hong Kong's history, it's also very much a part of Canada's history. As you've heard others say, December 8th, 1941 um, was the start of the battle, uh, but also the start of Canada's engagement uh, in the Second World War, a fact that's not well known in Canada. And the defense of Hong Kong, in fact, ended with very significant Canadian casualties. Of the 1,975 Canadian troops who came, 554 died, either in battle or in captivity. St. John Ambulance also lost 56 of its members. 
Here in Hong Kong, we have just marked uh, the, the battle through our own commemorative service, which we held uh, this Sunday just past, December 5th at the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, uh, Siwan War Cemetery. That event has been held every year since 1947, specifically to remember those 1,975 Canadian soldiers who joined allied and local forces in fighting courageously against overwhelming odds for 17 and a half days in December 1941. And we really believe that through this remembrance, Canada is reaffirming its commitment to peace and security on the global stage. We also remember Dr. Potin Chak, a World War II St. John Ambulance veteran who survived the Battle of Hong Kong and passed away in Canada a few months ago. Dr. Chak took part in various events commemorating the World War II uh, course and also uh, those who served. Uh, last year, he received the Second World War Tribute for Veterans from Veterans Affairs Canada. Let me say again, Canada remembers, Hong Kong remembers. Nous nous souffrirons de, we will always remember. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Consul General Van Lieten for your warm remarks, as well as to uh, Ms. Emily Mo for, of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in Toronto. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, the Honorable uh, Lawrence McCauley, uh, Minister of Veterans Affairs Canada, and to our very own Thai Spear of uh, St. John Ambulance, making their opening remarks to start this 80th anniversary commemoration. Uh, Mr. Chow, uh, let's begin. Thank you, Mr. Liu. On December 8, 1941, the Japanese Imperial Army simultaneously invaded Hong Kong and attacked Pearl Harbor. The Allied forces from Canada, the UK, Singapore, India, and Hong Kong were outmanned and outgunned four to one, but fought a hard battle for two weeks to protect the British colony. This skirmish would later will become known as the Battle of Hong Kong. <laughs> 日本王軍同時入侵香港同襲擊珍珠港,為了保護香港,當時的英國殖民地,盟軍包括加拿大,英國,新加坡,印度同香港,以四比一領先的平均人力同火力,關鍵兩星期,而呢場衝突後來被
there will be a special presentation to conclude the commemoration. 我哋喺呢度纪念呢一场战争嘅八十周年，通过虚拟方式将我哋跨越大洋嘅社区联系起嚟，喺太平洋两岸以虚拟花献，纪念所有失去生命以及幸存并在加拿大继续生活嘅人，以特别方式嚟纪念呢一次嘅活动。In Flanders fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie. In Flanders fields, take up a quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them. Nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them. They were young as we are young. They served, giving freely of themselves. To them we pledge amid the winds of time. 
to carry their torch and never forget. We will remember them. We will remember them. We will remember them. Now we have a special announcement to make this evening that coincides with the Battle of Hong Kong. 80 years ago, a young 19-year-old Po Tin Chak, a volunteer with the St. John Ambulance Hong Kong Brigade was positioned at the Collinson Battery, Cape Collinson in Chai Wan, when invaders landed there. The Collinson Battery defenders and the medical personnel were in full retreat and were even handed out grenades to help slow down the advancing army. But Po Tin Chak wasn't trained in warfare, he was trained in saving lives. They came upon a first aid station with an ambulance. And since Chak already knew how to drive, he was tasked with the driving the wounded to a field hospital at St. Stephen's College, but went to Stanley Fort instead. That act saved his life and the wounded individuals he was carrying. Was this a miscalculation, a request from a senior officer, or was it just his knowledge of the area Regardless, the invading army stormed St. Stephen's College hours before the surrender and murdered the defenseless medical staff, who many were Putin's colleagues, wounded military, including Canadian soldiers and civilians. The following day, Pontichak went to St. Stephen's College to seek the wounded, but instead became one of the few who witnessed the aftermath of the bloodstained campus. He survived the Battle of Hong Kong, the horrors of the St. Stephen's College massacre on Christmas Day, and the Sham Shui Po POW camp where he was interned at, along with nine other members of his team, including his British team leader, Mr. Potter. Sadly, Mr. Potter did not survive the POW camp as he was killed during internment. Poteen had met many Canadian, young Canadian service members during the internment. When they were liberated, he, along with 99 comrades, signed a handkerchief. This historic artifact was displayed in Vancouver here in BC at the Chinese Canadian Military Museum's Battle of Hong Kong exhibit in 2016 to commemorate the 75th anniversary and is now archived in the Bay de Calais Military Museum in Quebec. His father, Tai Kwan Jack, was a founding member of St. John Ambulance in Hong Kong at the start of the 20th century. While his brother, Paul Chak, and sister Pauline Chak Chan were founding members of the St. John Ambulance Causeway Bay Division in the 1950s. Po Tin Chak would later become a surgeon, and as you can see, dedicated his life to St. John Ambulance, and it was an honor and privilege to have known him in life. We are delighted to announce that with the blessing of the Chak family, that a scholarship is being established in Dr. Putin Chak's name towards St. John Ambulance BC UConn members that apply successfully to medical school. This is the first known scholarship to support med school students who strive to be like Dr. Chak in spirit, a fellow St. John Ambulance member who believed in saving lives for the betterment of humanity. I now invite Colleen Au, daughter of Dr. Chak, would like to say a few words on behalf of Dr. Chen, of the Chak family. Uh, Colleen? Hi, it's an honor for me to be invited to this meeting and also for you guys to honor my dad in this scholarship fund and also keep his story alive and continue to encourage any new medical students to continue into the field to helping people going forward. And it is truly an honor for us to be in, included in this event. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. The commemoration for the Battle of Hong Kong has now concluded. Thank you for joining us in your respective time zones to remember all those who served, but also who saved lives and for making our future a better one. On that note, for all those who would like to stay, we will switch gears now to a special presentation from St. John Ambulance's Youth Command in the lead up to the centenary of the cadet program worldwide. Mr. Chow, Please take it away. 
Thank you, Mr. Liu. Next, we are truly honored to start ramping up for next year's centenary of the cadet program with the exchanges from our fellow brothers and sisters in Hong Kong. I would like to invite cadet leader La Chung Yin, who was the award recipient of the Cadet of the Year in 2019 of Youth North New Territories Command, and will make a presentation about cadet life in Hong Kong for us this evening. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Lo Chung Yin, cadet leader. You can call me James. So let's share the PowerPoint first. Yep, thank you very much. So I would like to talk about some youth services in Hong Kong and the past, present, and in future. There are many activities through St. John, like competitions and the exchange programs, etc. First is the cadet movement and the history. The history of Hong Kong Youth Services is begin since 1948. The major target groups is the secondary students in Hong Kong. So uh, we have separated in two uh, regions, which is Hong Kong Island and Kowloon regions and youth new territory regions. And also we have PENDAS is, um, was established in 2013, targeting in primary school students, P3 to P6. Since we, since um, during the Hong Kong, since the purpose is training those uh, teenagers is uh, display their talents because like leadership skills, et cetera, because um, teenagers is the future masters of Hong Kong. So um, have a great leadership training to will uh, bring a better competitiveness be to the other teenagers and become a successful role in the society. There is many UG groups in Hong Kong. St. John is one of them. In total, there is um, 11 HABs sub subsidized UG groups in the total members of it is like exceeded 110,000 people. In St. John, including offices in youth, we have of 4,153 people in Hong Kong. So St. John Fellows is the next part. There is eight fellows, I think the global St. John is followed and the new fellows of St. John is, um, yes, it's new fellows. Uh, I think all around the world, this, this fellows is based on the IEN topics. And after the discussions of IEN will form that there is eight St. John fellows. Um, I think Hong Kong will following is following and will follow tight in the future. What's more is the IEN. Hong Kong is one of the IEN members of, Hong Kong is one of the IEN members IEN is a uh, youth advisory network in the international. So uh, we will have an international exclusive meeting committee formed by different countries uh, around the world, St. John's around the world. So in Hong Kong, we also have an HKN to accept, to receive the um, opinions from the younger generations to make the better change of the Hong Kong St. John Youth. There is eight reps. So uh, Hong Kong and Canada also is the members of it. 
So as I mentioned, we will collect the views of youth St. John through the uh, anonymous survey questionnaires, etc., to help to enhance the uh, whole environment in the Hong Kong St. John youth and the international St. John. So what is the characteristics of you? Why we need the youth? Because Because um, the major purpose is to bring them up into the society. Because uh, as I mentioned, the youth is the master of the society in the future. So um, sharpen our sense of belonging, self images, love and beloved, et cetera, um, values is quite important part in St. John. So this is, the characteristics of youth and through some services and duties, those abilities will be sharpened. The Structure and Development Training Award Scheme in St. John Youth. There is the organizational chart in the uh, Hong Kong St. John Evans Brigade Youth Come Out, which have our commissioner, Mr. Poon and the, the deputy commissioner, Dr. So, and the um, senior assistant commissioner in youth, which is Mr. Dave Yao. And also uh, two regions have the own ICs. There is over there is over 90 divisions in the uh, youth command, including PANDAS, which is the primary uh, students in St. John's. We have over 100 divisions in the youth command, which is quite huge amount in Hong Kong. I'm so sorry that there is Chinese in here because the, these PowerPoint slides is also used in the officers training program in Hong Kong. So, um, I'm feel so sorry about that. I will uh, briefly explain in English. Thank you. Um, first, we have more major three elements, which is progressive training, um, disciplinary norms, and team pro process. First, we will train such as uh, foot drill. Uh, first aid, etc. I think most of the St. John we train and also we would like to have some camping skills and uh, leadership skills through holding some uh, activities and meetings in the younger cadets. So it will help their leadership skills to get some rewards after that. Second is um, about the disciplined training because in the youth is the mostly um, as the independence progress. So the uh, disciplines is quite important and we will through the uh, food drill trainings to have to enhance the discipline. The team life, mostly uh, the team processes uh, will have officers and different NCOs in the one division. So. I uh, will also let the cadet members, younger cadet members, to be a uh, uh, leaders to let them try what they are uh, grow up and try to hold a game or hold uh, activities to make them feel they are the leaders in the future. So the cadet training schemes is the next part. This is a total new scheme in Hong Kong. Uh, well, there is two stages in total to uh, make sure that everyone in youth have same experiences. Don't make them bored is the most principle to uh, uh, let the teenager stay in the St. John. So uh, this is peri uh, different trainings and this is a systemizes program and let the cadets to experience the St. John life and broaden their horizons not only in their own divisions, but also in the whole St. John youth. So this, is, this is the cadet pathway, which major in this usually in two pathways, which um, when the 
cadet in the 18 years old will promote them like a cadet leader like me and maybe if they're interested in uh, going to adult they will go to the uh, adult team members as not will not stay in the youth uh, regions so the next the next way to being an officer is in youth who uh, being a youth officer after being a cadet leader and uh, officer cadet will going to uh, officer training course and to promote to the officers. The award schemes in youth command. I think uh, like many St. John's around the world, there is uh, efficiency awards and the proficiency awards, which uh, there is total in eight different um, eight different uh, courses and eight different ways. To in total, we need to fulfill all in total 12 courses to uh, will have the grand achievement award. So there is the activities we will have. The first is the care, like um, caring for the sick and the health and hygiene, which is quite important in nowadays in the society. And the second is the emergency care, like uh, am ambulance aid and um, casualty simulation. The third is the communication. Uh, we have international friendship to broaden the youth horizons in the international way and the radio communication between um, the duties they were used, like uh, some special, special slangs like A is uh, A, B, C, D is uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, etc. And the fourth is the craft and hobbies. There's many things we uh, have learned, we want to learn and the, in the POFI course, we will learn many things like uh, photography and uh, uh, model making, etc. And the fifth is the outdoor life skills like camping, map reading, um, uh, rock climbing, etc. To uh, to enhance our life saving skills for ourselves, not just only in first aid and food drills. Also, sports and uh, civil domestic education is and the compulsory part, of course, is this thing, the knowledge of St. John. These are the um, photos in the proficiency course. Like uh, before the COVID-19, this, in this mall is before the COVID-19. Yeah, and at the right side of the part is uh, a tree climbing. Look at, look at the members, is quite happy. What's next is the different awards. Like uh, first in the left-hand side, we would like, I would like to talk about the AYP, the Hong Kong Award of Young People, which is in the before is the Duke of Edinburgh's award. So I uh, will play different activities like hikings, campings to fulfill our life-saving skills and to get the awards, not just only inside the classroom, but also in the field sites. In the middle one is the uh, special service shield. We, we will go, the cadets will go some uh, public services like uh, have some cow control skills and as a first aid assistance to gain some duty hours to um, fulfill this award. The blue one is fulfill 200 hours and the uh, silver one is 500 hours and the gold one is uh, 1,000 hours. And the, in the bottom is the AED courses, uh, AED award, AED badges. And we need to fulfill, we need to have uh, automatic external defenders courses and after we finish it and have an examination, we can uh, wear this badge in our uniforms. So uh, all of those badges is can wear in the uniforms. So 
And the right hand side is the best cadets of the year. Uh, the best cadet of the year is, is the biggest award in the cadet, which is the most, uh, most, uh, is the most role model in a year of the cadets members. Uh, so each command will have one best cadet of the year only, which is the whole St. John in every year will have two best cadet of the year. Each division will nominate one best cadet to uh, compete with other divisions and have an interview board to select the best cadet of the year of the command. The best cadet of the year is a role model of the St. John youth and the representative of the St. John youth. The requirement is uh, there is 50, must fulfill 50 duty hours in the past 12 months and supported by the teacher in charge at school because um, mostly uh, Hong Kong is, Hong Kong St. John Youth is based on, based on the secondary school. So it's uh, quite important to get the support by the teacher in charge in school. So uh, as the ceremony before, this is the brigade annual membranes. So uh, we will never forget the soldiers and the St. John members in the sacrifices in the World War II. So this is our uh, some photos in the ceremony. These are the public services in uh, our daily life times. Like um, the left hand side is some uh, helping the public to doing some blood pressure taxes and some doing some measuring their pulse and uh, let the doctors uh, to give some professional advice to the normal people. And the right hand side is the first aid assistant uh, duties in, in that experience, I think we need to climb over the mountain up and down, up and down because there is uh, many patients. So the fitness training is quite quite needed in uh, St. John Ambulance. So uh, in a funny way, we have the summer camps, which is uh, it's the whole St. John Youth Command laying together. Like we hold so many activities and uh, a lot of divisions are combined it in different groups. So we will uh, meet more people to broaden our network of uh, in the youth. And we will invite some uh, different countries, uh, St. John's like in this year, 2019, I think there is Malaysia, St. John's in there. Okay, those are our um, steps and uh, NCO ranking of it. Those cadet corporal and sergeant and to become a cadet leader or officer cadet. In each division, it has the own divisional secretary and divisional storekeeper to, uh, to well cooperate with the function of the division to maintain a, a good uh, activity quality and um, to jot down some minutes and uh, agendas, etc., for the uh, divisional meetings. So thank you very much. This is all the uh, St. John's, uh, youth St. John's activities and help the future we can connect with the Canada or different countries St. John's to have more, more, more and more exchange programs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cadet Leader Law. Good evening. I'm the Divisional Training Officer of Division 39 Cadet Division, Garfield Huang. Um, now we have a few questions by our NCOs this evening. Um, I would like uh, Sergeant Butler go first. Please go ahead, Sergeant Butler. Good evening, Cadet Leader Law. Uh, my question for you is, what is your favorite aspect of the Hong Kong Cadet Program? Uh, I think the most aspect I've enjoyed 
is the um, competition in each year because uh, the divisional competition is it can shows the most uh, teamwork and team cooperation between each other. So you uh, less food drill uh, in uh, nine in the morning and the seven in the evening. The whole teamwork is I I I'm so I'm so proud of it. And when we succeed, we get some award. Will the whole team is like uh yelling each other i mean uh, in a good way in a good way <laughs> of course uh, uh, so we were so excited for our uh works and our like our it feel comfortable to us for us to uh, join those competitions so the competition is i've most enjoyed in the whole st john's youth lives thank you Thank you. I can agree with you as well. I enjoy competitions yeah. over yeah. here. Thank you. Thank you, Swali the Law. Mm, I think the next question will from um, our Scott leader, Chen. Hello, good evening. My question for you is, how do you think that, what is your opinion on what if the like Canadian St. John Ambulance Group did events like Hong Kong, like other than outside of first aid, like cooking and like sports and that stuff, what is your opinion on us doing that? I think it surely is good because um, all round skills is no matter it is St. John Ambulance members should enhance also as a, as a good person should be enhance in our lives so i think every excuse is is we need to learn in our daily life so we need to broaden our experiences so you get many opportunities of when well, maybe you can find your final hobbies and final goals of your life so i think uh, many all of the excuses sh should learn in uh, not just canada st john's maybe around the world thank you Thank you. Thank you, Kadeli the Law. Um, I believe Koko Yu is the next person I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question for you is, I assume you were once a cadet too, like what is your like one takeaway you'd like to say to your current cadets that are still in the program right now? I would like to say to my cadets to, I would like to cheer up them because since the COVID-19, there is no face-to-face uh, -face meeting in Hong Kong so uh, uh, quite a while so their uh, passion may be some uh, less and I would like to cheer up them and in this through the Zoom meeting I will uh, I will make some uh, more funny activities and to make them uh, think they are belongs to St. John and um, this is most important part. So I will um, tell them you are the best and you are great. Um, so don't never give up in each way. So I will cheer up them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Cadet Leader Law. Um, I believe our squad leader Ma will have the next question for you. Good evening, Cadet Leader Law. My question for you is why did you join St. John Ambulance? My uh, as I remember, I joined St. John Ambulance is honestly a quite simple reason because uh, once my mother is got shock in a uh, market, so it, it, I need to call the ambulance. So uh, I, in that part, I'm, I'm trying to learn some first aid skills to have a basic uh, basic skills, basic first aid skills before the uh, ambulance is coming. So that's the reason I'm joining the St. John to save, maybe uh, have uh, immediate uh, skills to help my families and my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet Leader Law. Um, I believe Sergeant Ma will have the next questions for you. Um, yes. Uh, good evening, Cadet Leader Law. My question for you tonight is, 
Um, do you guys have anything similar to what we have, which is um, NCLDP? So basically, it's like an overnight camp for cadets. So we do drill and we teach and stuff like that and do team building activities. So do you guys have something similar? And in the future, would we possibly be able to participate? <laughs> in the past, we have a uh, NCO training course in at the past. I'm likely I'm at the course uh, of the corporal. We have a, a camp which is drill and uh, some uniform inspection from the officers and uh, uh, first aid examinations to, and a promotion board to, uh, after that, we, if we all passed it and we will uh, be a corporal or sergeant. So in nowadays, uh, there's little differences. Uh, as I mentioned, the cadet training scheme is the new scheme. So there is different courses like knowledge of St. John's, uh, communication skills, and also uh, the, there is a camp and uh, uh, there is a camp and some food drill skills and some uh, uniform skills is we need to learn. After passes the, the stage one, we will like the cadets will to uh, be nominated to a corporal, yes. We do have those uh, experiences. Yes, cheers. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to answer my question. Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you, Cadet Lee Long, for all yes. those good answers and sharing more detail about the cadet life in Hong Kong. Yes, thank um, you very much. <laughs> I know it is nice and warm in Hong Kong. Um, oh, it's, it's quite cold, actually. Cold? I feel yeah. What, what temperature are you talking about when you're saying cold? <laughs> I think um, 11 degree is quite cold in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is quite wet actually. So. <laughs> oh, well, next time when you talk to a Canadian, when you mention the word <laughs> cold, uh, please be aware of that. Yeah, I see. Yeah, below zero in here. <laughs> so. Um, now, I uh, would we'll like to invite uh, our cadet, uh, Fiona Tang, to present our most challenge and the final question of the year to you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Please go ahead, Cadet Tang. Good evening, Cadet Leader Law. I'm, F I'm Cadet Fiona Tang, and my question for you is, what is your favorite ice cream? Um, I'm a big fan of color pink. So, uh, my favorite ice cream is strawberry. Strawberry is the top one in the earth, in the universe. So, uh, I think the strawberry ice cream is my favorite. Yes, cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet Ten. Thank you, Ms. Huang. Uh, a very big thank you to Cadet Leader Law. Yes, thank uh, you very for much. this uh, special presentation. Uh, to Thank start you. our ball uh, rolling in time to celebrate uh, 100 years of the cadet program next year. Uh, and uh, before I continue with the closing remarks, I do have a question that came from Minister George Chow. Uh, he asked, uh, well, he said first, thanks for your presentation, Cadet Leader Law. Uh, have you ever visited Canada? No, I, I wish to visit, but I've never visited in Canada. So I'm so sorry about that. In, in the future, I will have opportunities to visit. Yes, I'm, I'm quite sure of that. Okay, well, there's, here's an opportunity for us to uh, welcome you uh, in the near, sure. near future when it's uh, safe to travel again. Uh, yeah, thank uh, you. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you uh, again. Yes, and thank you, uh, thank you to uh, Commissioner Poon for his continued support. Uh, also to Superintendent Hui uh, and Superintendent uh, Chow, uh, Louis Chow, uh, uh, who, uh, you know, we just heard uh, from uh, Superintendent Chow. He served in both uh, St. John Ambulance Canada and Australia for a period of time before he returned to uh, Hong Kong. Uh, but most importantly, he was serving here in the North Shore, which is very uh, great to hear. Um, and of course, a, a very big thank you to uh, our team at PHQ for the support for tonight, but for, of course, during the entire year. Uh, 
let's uh, give everyone here a, a big thumbs up uh, for all their hard work and all their uh, you know support. Thank you so much. Um, now, after nearly two years of being uh, behind uh, these screens, uh, we are truly delighted to be hosting our first in-person event in just a couple of weeks here in Burnaby at Central Park. Uh, so uh, please join us on the morning of December 18th for our inaugural Walk Aid, uh, a play on words uh, for walk and inspiring destination. Uh, using the backdrop, uh, backdrop of Burnaby's idyllic destinations, uh, this event will bring about public awareness and give us an opportunity to unplug, unwind, and work towards a healthier lifestyle simply by connecting with nature and walking. Uh, we thank Tourism Burnaby for the support uh, as we bring our members out uh, and community partners out to kick off our series to celebrate the health benefits of leading a healthier lifestyle. Uh, what I would like to now invite uh, Deputy Provincial uh, Commissioner uh, Steve Kern uh, to make uh, closing remarks. Uh, Commissioner Kern, sir. Thank you very much. It's uh, even though uh, we're so far apart in uh, kilometers and that, it's uh, quite interesting. I grew up in North Vancouver, Mr. Chow, so uh, not far from where uh, the St. John office is. And it was uh, quite interesting to hear about the uh, cadets and uh, the pandas. I know we have a group of over here, uh, not with St. John, but they're also, they're called the beavers. I think the countries pick their, their cutest animals and name cadets after them and that. Um, uh, it was not long ago, a couple of years ago, that I was standing at the grave of Lieutenant Colonel Dr. John McRae in Flanders Fields, and I laid a, a poppy of that wreath. It is very important that we, that we uh, never forget, and this uh, whole service today was quite uh, poignant and, and was very good uh, to, uh, to be part of that. And I thank everyone for the work and all the, uh, the, the high level VIPs, uh, the consul, the MLAs, um, the, uh, our First Nation elders and that, um, and the honorary uh, colonels and lieutenant colonels that have been able to attend. Um, and uh, just today, uh, our St. John Ambulance British Columbia Yukon was having a board meeting and uh, Divisional Superintendent uh, Hazade and Mr. Chow, uh, Division Superintendent Chow, were both presented with the Chairman's commendation uh, just a few hours ago. And uh, they've been very quiet about the whole thing. I'm sure they're gonna buy a round of drinks sometime down the line. <laughs> so congratulations uh, for their work and uh, volunteerism and efforts for uh, helping out and. Uh, and it's nice to see some recognition going out on, on that. Um, on another uh, serious note, we still find ourselves here in British Columbia under uh, emergency declaration for flood operations. And many of our St. John Ambulance uh, volunteers have been working at the evacuation centers uh, in uh, Kamloops, Kelowna, Chilliwack, and uh, out in um, Abbotsford, as well as we were called to do part of the HEART program, the Health Emergency Area Response Team. We sent into uh, Abbotsford General Hospital to help out there. So a special thanks to all those uh, members. And I see many of the faces uh, of those people that were, were actually participating in that and a uh, very important role uh, for uh, everyone to do. And with that, uh, I'd like to wish you all a very uh, wonderful and safe Christmas and happy holidays. And at this point, we'll have Provincial Chaplain Nathan Ip provide a closing prayer, followed by the Stay Strong One St. John Ambulance video. Let us pray. Lest we forget for the faith and for the service of humanity. Gracious God, we thank you for all who have made this meeting possible. The organizers, speakers, attendees, we thank you for St. John for the rich heritage of our order and for the future open to us. Bless us and those who seek to serve in our area, in our country and in Hong Kong and beyond. Help us to expect the best from each other and grant us imagination courage and wisdom as we carry out our caring service. Grant wisdom to those in leadership as they guide St. John in the, into the future. We ask these things 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Sujith Varagas from the set of Transplant. Stay strong, one St. John. 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 Stay strong, one Saint 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 John. From the mighty Niagara. Stay strong, one St. John. 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 Stay strong. 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 One St. John. Stay strong, 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 one St. John. Stay strong. One Saint John. Stay strong, 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 one Saint John.
Thank you.